Hello everyone, I'm here today with a new process video. I'm working on a page from the Harry Potter store in New York and I'm using one of the newer flip style page protectors. So it's a six by eight, but really it has four extra slots. So you can see here, this is what I have planned for the outside. I already had the photos in there just for ease. They may have to come out if I add something to them, we'll see. And then on this side, this will actually go here, but I need it out. I need a card for here and here. This is actually just the back side of this one. So I don't want to use that twice, even though the color looks good, matches. I don't want to use that same thing twice. So I actually need another card for here as well. And then I have three more photos that I want to use. So definitely starting with some things that need to get done here. The other thing I want to note is that I have a ton of Harry Potter embellishment things. So I have these kind of at the ready. I have this pack of ephemera items. Whoops, let's go right side up here. So those are from Echo Park. I have some wood veneer things from Shadney on Etsy. I have these two sheets of wizarding stickers. And then I have this little baggie of different phrase labels and ephemera pieces and things. They're all digital files that I bought and you can see there aren't many in here. I have ended up running very low because I've used a lot of these in the past 18 months or so. So I actually thought I had and I printed a bunch. They're not cut out, but I printed them. So I have several pages here. I have all of these, this, and this so I can use anything here if I feel like it might work so I have lots of options at my disposal I just realized I missed a page of stuff I also printed these and mainly it was because I love the cards representing each house and that's really why I wanted them anything else on here is a bonus although I did realize there's a sorting hat on here which I kind of forgot about and we are wearing the sorting hat. So if needed, I could, I wouldn't use it probably as is, but I could fussy cut that. So I'm glad I printed this and I'll hang on to it because you never know, might, might need some of these because I do need another card here. And both my friend and I happen to be Gryffindors. So I could cut that out and use Gryffindor. So after I just showed this page, I realized, you know what? I probably really should use Gryffindor because the sorting hat were acting like we're being sorted into houses and we're both Gryffindor, so maybe I should use it. It may cause me to move some cards around though because I don't know that I want red next to red like that, but I have plenty of slots available here where I can move things around. So I think my first order of business is I will cut this out and figure out some kind of configuration. I think I have figured out a configuration that will work here. Part of the problem I was having is that I didn't want two pictures of me next to each other and given how many I had and the number of slots that was making it a challenge, but I think I have figured it out. If I do it this way, I'm over here and then I wanted both of these together. So when you open it up, you see them. I didn't want to separate us. So we're both there. Then I have the Gryffindor card here. Then on the front, oops, nope. Then I'd be next to each other. Oh, see, I'm already changing a little bit. So then I'll put me down here and then I found another card that I can use. I like this one because it's got the red and then I figure I don't like red necessarily next to each other like that but I figure I can find something red to put up like in this corner I got dead space here so I'll either find a phrase I know there were a bunch in there um, there's got to be something on those sticker sheets I had even if it's just a little star or something like that I can find something to bring in that red so I think this is the configuration I'm starting with who knows I could change again but I hope this works And looking at this, because I have lots of gold here and here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this card that has the Gryffindor tie here, and I'm going to use my gold glitter pen and outline along the gold in the tie just to bring in more of the shiny gold look to it and add a little sparkle. I have done the highlighting on the tie and hopefully the camera's picking that up so that you can see that there's a little sparkle there. So I'm excited about that. That part's done. Now I have to figure out how the heck am I going to embellish all of these other photo slots. 
I was looking for something red here and I found something. It's not exactly as bright red as these, but it is in the red family and it fits that it's with Hagrid here. And it says, you're a wizard. It's more of a brick red. It's not super bright, but I'm going to cut it out and try it and see if I can get away with it. Otherwise, are there any other reds on here? No, just this one and that doesn't really work there. I do have a couple of things here, like there's this little quill. There are some little just red star. So if I try the your wizard phrase and I don't like it, I could, you know, use one of these instead. Oh, I do have another red one here. Yeah, I have options. So we'll just see what happens. I did cut this out, but when I laid it on the photo, I don't like it. It's too dark and it almost looks more brown because of this background. So I don't like it. It doesn't stand out enough. So I'm not going to use that. So I am going to have to go into my other reds, probably on those stickers. I do also have several sets of Harry Potter stamps. So if I had to, I could stamp in a brighter red and put it on here, but I'm going to try the stickers first. I decided to just go with stars on this one. So I did both kind of a brownish tone plus the red there. And then for this card, I went in those phrases I just printed and they have one in there that says the chosen one. And that's appropriate since it's talking about Harry Potter, who is the chosen one. And I figured this looks like him. It's a reference to him. So I will just probably put that down there and then that card is finished. So as I was looking at this, I'm now debating possibly moving the mirror of Erised to somewhere else because I really like this guy. <laughs> And so I'm thinking I probably need a background and then I can fussy cut him and put him on there and maybe do like a little gold splattering or something. I don't know, something like that. But I feel like it fits better with these colors than this does too. That's a lot of brown. It's very busy and this would make it a little more simple. In my three by four cards that are all Harry Potter related, I have a whole stack here. I decided to go to the back to see if I could find just some that were just backgrounds or had pictures and could I work the sorting hat into it. And there were several in there, but when I looked at them, they didn't really work with what I wanted until I got to the end, which is this one. This is actually not a card. It's just a piece of paper that I had from an old set, but I cut it down to be a three by four and it has a wizard on it on a broom flying with a Gryffindor scarf which is kind of cool for what I've got going here I think so I'm thinking I will fussy cut this I could also use the square as is if I wanted maybe I'll start with that and see just get rid of the white and then if I don't like it I could fussy cut actually I could do that right now let's just clip this off see what I think of it Hmm. Part of me likes the gold because of this. It gives a visual triangle. But it also is, this pattern is very busy against the background. But I'm afraid if I cut that out, then the sorting hat will blend in too much. Now I could do a white border. Ooh, let's try that. Maybe I will cut a white border around it before I fussy cut and see if that helps. This was white, but not all the way around. And this is way too wide. I would never do that. I'm thinking like an eighth of an inch at most. I cut out a square that's an eighth of an inch around all sides. I like the way it looks here. And when I put it here, that is definitely better than what I had. I think it gives enough of a border where it stands out. If I cut this by itself without the background, I don't think it's going to work. So I think I'm going to go with that. I would still have room for a phrase if I wanted, or I can just put it smack in the middle and it would be good to go. I thought, oh, maybe I want a phrase on there. So I pulled out my sheets that I just printed. Look what's on here. <laughs> so, and I like that it's kind of a tan and brown shade here because of my sweater and the brown that's in the background. I think I'm gonna cut that out and use it on this card. I'll probably overlap it in some way, but I do wanna use it. Here's what I decided to do with this card. I used the phrase and I just put some staples in, did this little off center so you can still see a nice amount of the background. So now I have that. 
And I have to figure out, do I want to add anything here? This is a lot of dark space there. Not that I couldn't leave it alone, but I could add something. I also have dead space here and here. Actually, maybe I should cover up this ugly light or whatever that is up there. I can look for something for that next. And yeah, I still feel like maybe I need something here. I'm not sure, but I'll work on this one next. Okay, I'm DIYing something here. I went into my ephemera pack of stuff and this was actually a frame and I had pulled it for a previous layout thinking I might use it, ended up putting it back. But here I decided, okay, I'm just gonna cut off one side to make it look like a tab almost. So this is what I ended up with. I have that. And then I printed out from my sheet of phrases, Accio. And so I think what I'm going to do is layer. I'm going to put this here and then put this over it like so, it covers up that ugly thing that I didn't want, plus it adds something fun. I want to mention a couple of things here. I did add this tiny little red sticker here just to bring in some of that red, and then I decided to put a staple in over there. And now I am going to do this card. I've decided to use this phrase. I wanted it to look like the others, be the same color. And it jumps out nicely on this back black background here. So I think I'm just going to put it right there sort of at the bottom of the tie and then I feel like those phrases are nicely spaced. I have everything put together now so I'll just do a quick close-up here. Here's with it closed and I think all of these look together even when the layout isn't fully open so that's awesome and then you open it up and there's the full layout. I did add this. I put in some staples just so there would be one on each of these. And I am in love with the way that this turned out. I can't wait to get this alumni album. So here's another one done for New York. Thanks for watching.